Well, hello everyone. Um, this is my friend Charlie McDonald. He's the executive director of the Upper Room. We are at the Upper Room. Uh, we're actually in a storage closet because they're <laughs> setting up meals to feed around 300 people. They feed 300 people a day. What an amazing, amazing it is, ministry. It? And, and uh, you know, the topic on restoration, you're helping people realize that they can be restored. People have been walking through some tough times. And I want to get to that, but Charlie, why don't you tell your, your journey of restoration? My journey of, uh, of restoration and redemption uh, uh, started uh, a long time ago. I was uh, born and raised uh, in a Christian family. I grew up going to church, uh, knowing who, who God was. I don't believe I ever had a real relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, and I didn't, uh, I didn't get, get that connection. Uh, at 18, I walked away, uh, decided to make my own decision, my own choices, uh, which uh, turned out not to be good. Uh, and they got worse and worse as I, as I progressed. Uh, I uh, went through two marriages, 30 years uh, uh, addicted or using meth. Um, uh, had a, um, was in a relationship and a, uh, uh, and a child was born and uh, I was lost at that time. I was unemployed. I was homeless. Uh, had no place and no hope, um, and scared. Uh, and uh, heard my son was born. Um, didn't know what I was going to do. A friend of mine uh, said, "I know a church. Let's go there." Uh, and I went to the church. Uh, met uh, an awesome man by the name of Tim Fulton, who uh, who showed me what Christ's love was for probably for the first time in my life. Um, uh, non-judgmental, non uh, offering hope, and uh, I felt that connection develop. Uh, I got involved with men's groups, I uh, got involved with the, uh, uh, the church uh, food program there, and, uh, and celebrate recovery. Uh, and through uh, the, the support of the church, uh, the support of Celebrate Recovery, the love of uh, that forever family that you create there, uh, I found who Christ was, uh, what his plan for my life was, I found hope, uh, and uh, uh, things progressed. I ended up getting a job, uh, eventually offered a job uh, here at the Upper Room as, as Executive Director, where I've um, changed things around a little bit, I guess. Uh, we uh, eventually, uh, we started out serving uh, just meals, uh, and now we're doing uh, wound care, legal aid, um, um, I'm going to jump back in yeah, here. Yeah, jump back in. No, this is great. Um, this is amazing to me because Charlie, he won't say it, but he's a great leader and it's, oh, it was always there. I guess it was. Yeah. It's when you found the right spot. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I um, I wake up in the middle of the night going, they're going to find out that I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> uh, we all do that. <laughs> we all do that. Uh, but yet uh, we seem to be successful and I get that to... Just, just to God that He's put me where He wants me. I've been able to be His, his hands and feet, serving a community that I deeply care about, uh, providing them food and services, uh, and most importantly, friendship and relationships uh, that uh, come without judgment, uh, that uh, gives them hope and uh, a, a chance to uh, exhale and breathe and uh, yeah. contemplate their position and. Uh, and maybe offer themselves some hope. Let me ask you two questions, actually. I said I had one yeah. to, to end this, but I got two. Was there that point before you met Tim Fulton where you just said, there's no chance that my life's gonna be restored? I was I was pretty low. I, yeah, I, there certainly was, I certainly had no hope. Yeah. No hope yeah. at all. Uh, so, so, so the question is, because look, your journey, I mean, uh, you're so inspiring. What's the best way we can inspire these guests that are about ready to come in to have these meals? What's what's the best thing we can do? The best thing we can do is um, is love on them. Uh, you know, the best thing I think we do develop that trust and that bond with them uh, is we sit down. I sit down and eat with them at the table mm -hmm. uh, as often as I can. I, I walk around. Uh, it takes a while to break those those barriers and those walls, but when they start to break, you see. You start seeing smiles. You start hearing laughter. You can see them relaxing and enjoying life, um, and that's huge. I mean, that tells me that I'm. It's an indicator that what we're doing here is the right thing. So awesome.
Awesome. This is so cool. Uh, we're going to have to do a documentary on the upper room. Would love that. Yeah, that would be cool. I got one more thing I want you to share. It's, to a, it's a, a surprise. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk about when you had your son and um, a thing a men's group did for you. Oh, well, what? <laughs> um, because uh, it, it's about yeah, community. Right. It's about being there for. It is about time. community, and that it, that really did was a strong change. You know, made the change. Um, here I am coming off 30 years of meth, uh, just clean for a few weeks, at a church that I really didn't know anybody, uh, and about to have a baby. And when my son was born, they uh, they called me up and said, uh, "If you want him, come and get him." And it was like, what do I know about a two-week-old baby or raising one? Uh, and the men's group and the staff of the church and the women um, got together and threw me a party. They found me a place to stay. Uh, they helped me get into an apart or a, in a condominium. Um, uh, they threw a baby shower for me. Uh, I was just overwhelmed with, with love. But it was like, we don't care where what your past was. We don't care where you came from. We don't care about all the bad decisions you made. You're here now, and you need us, and we're here for you. And uh, I think I've taken that with me uh, since then. That's part of one of my philosophies in life. So, so our God is a God of restoration, and then He asks us, as His hands and feet, Absolutely. to be that restoration for our community. I'm lucky to do what I do. You're awesome. Thank you, Charlie. Hey, how old's your son now? Uh, he'll be 18 in February. So <laughs> wow. It's been a while. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Thanks so much.